looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Light on Living. I'm Light Coach Lisa, holistic nutritionist and life coach, helping to lighten the load of life challenges. Each show, we shine the spotlight on helpful techniques, mindsets, lifestyles, and inspiring stories to help you get through, not over, life's challenges. What if we had a real crystal ball, a way of seeing into our own future, a way of predicting certain events? Well, we actually do. When we understand our cycles and can follow and predict our hormones, we suddenly have that superhuman power to plan and prepare for our own life. About a year ago, my best friend Shelly forwarded me the most amazing website. It literally did change my life. At first, it was just something I thought it was really neat and interesting. I thought, oh, I can relate to that. That's helpful. And, and really, it's honestly something, you know, Shelly and I would chat about, like, oh, you must be in that week because you're not sleeping well. Oh, you must be in that week. So as we continue to share this back and forth, I thought this is this is literally like having my own crystal ball. I can check out when my why my moods are not too crazy pants, but you know, sometimes they're this way, sometimes they're that way. What about my energy? There's actually a reason for our energy dips and, and climbs and then our sleep and even our motivation when we're trying to work or get some projects done or do stuff around the house. It's all about hormones. So I thought, you know what? I want to help spread this message and I want to help people understand this. So I've invited an amazing, incredible, and just a joy, joy, joyful woman, Gabrielle Lichterman, creator of Hormonology, or if you want to go check it out, it's www.myhormonology.com to enlighten us so we can all look into our own crystal ball. Gabrielle, I believe I have you on the line. Yes, you sure do, Lisa. Thank you ever so much for having me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. And just now that I know everybody is we're here, I want to just share with everybody a smidgy, smidgy about you. It's the tiniest little thing, but then I want to dive into the crystal ball that you've helped us all like shine and polish so we can look into. But so everyone, <laughs> Gabrielle Lichterman is a she is leading the growing movement among women to live in sync with their menstrual cycles and know more about all of the ways their hormones impact their moods, their health, and behavior. A movement that began with her own groundbreaking book, 28 Days, What Your Cycle Revealed About Your Love Life, who, Your Moods, and Potential, and Her Creation of Hormonology. Oh, my goodness, Gabrielle, this is every single topic in the world, and I think you are like a superwoman to be able to help us do this. And we just wanted to thank you. I need to thank you ahead of time. Actually, I want to, I want to thank Shelly for introducing you to hormonology because – um, Shelly, Shelly put the, the wheels in motion for this, so thank you. Big shout out to her. Oh, I should so, love that, uh, please. And go ahead. You could tell, yeah, start it. Like, why? Why hormonology? Why did you think, oh, my goodness, women need to know this? Well, you know, I'm going to place a very good wager that, a lot of women who are listening right now hearing, oh, you know, my hormones, you're telling me my hormones, you know, are affecting my mood. First of all, you know, how is that groundbreaking news? And possibly the second thought they have is, you know, why, you know, why are you bringing all the, you know, down to, our, down to my hormones? Isn't that like, ugh, just oh. so typical, you know, isn't that just a horrible thing? But I want to tell you this. I want to tell those women who – are new to this idea of hormonology that it will become the most practical, useful tool you will have ever heard of in your entire life. I promise you. I promise you. So here's why. Um, when Women who have healthy monthly cycles, um, you know, they, they get their period regularly, whether it's every 28 days or every 22 days or every 35 days, it doesn't matter what length your cycle is. If you get monthly cycles, then the hormones that go up and down 
throughout that monthly cycle follow the same exact path. They follow the same pattern month after month. That means they're going up and down the same way. And here's why that's important. As your hormones go up or as your hormones go down, they exert different effects on your moods, energy, libido, uh, how well you sleep, your motivation, as you, as you mentioned before, and so much else, you, you know, what foods you crave, um, what, what you shop for. Yeah. And this is all, yeah, and this is all driven by research. This isn't something that, you know, somebody sat down and thought, oh, okay, well, I'm feeling this way, so it must be because of my hormones. No, 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 no. Scientists have all, from all around the world, have, have, have examined hormonal effects on us, and they affect both men and women. We're going to focus on women today because that's what I specialize in. But hormones have profound effects on us. Um, it's just the way we were built. It's just an evolutionary thing. Um, so the, when they go up, when they go down, they have specific effects. And the great thing is when you know how your hormones are going to be impacting you from week to week in your cycle, because they have different effects each week of your cycle, but they're the same effects every week of your cycle, you know what tomorrow is going to be like. You know what next week is going to be like. You know what you're going to be like a month from now. You're, you know what mood, energy, dietary habits you're going to have a year from now based solely on where you are in your cycle. And that is powerful knowledge to have. It's, it's, it, it will make your life so much easier because you can plan around these hormonal effects. I love that you actually just use the word powerful. That's, I think that's exactly what when I first started reading, I thought, I actually, I'm very, you know, I, I know my cycles and I know, that I usually would say, hmm, that's a hormonal thing. And I would chalk it up to that, that, that average. But when I started learning the things that you were sharing and putting out there, the, I remember that I remember the first thing, the first thing I was like, what? Oh my goodness, this is gold. And here's, here's the piece that I read. I read the piece that you wrote and shared with us about there are, there's two weeks of the cycle that you would want to be focusing on cardio versus weight training. And then there's the other yeah. two weeks that you, that it, you'd be more effective. So even right down to our workout. So I know a lot of women say, you know what, sometimes I just feel like I can get to the gym or I can go for my run or I can, I feel really energized. But the other times you, they, that, um, they just don't. And there's, that's actually, we could trace that back nine, trace it back, but there's a reason for that. And when I read that, when you wrote that and I read that, I thought, wait a second, I can actually make all of my lifestyle, my, my workouts more effective. I can burn more fat here. Why would I even do that there? Because that's not going to work for me here. So that was my first Absolutely. one. I felt powerful. That's the power. <laughs> yes, you, can you can maximize everything from your workout to a work project to a home project to building a business. You can maximize everything by matching tasks you do with the week you're on in your monthly cycle. Because a lot of women think, okay, hormones may affect me, but probably only premenstrually and maybe during my period. But that's not true. They have profound effects that are specific and different each week of your cycle. Week one, which starts with your period. Week two, which is the week leading up to and including ovulation. Week three, which is the week after ovulation. And week four, which is your premenstrual week. Each one, each week has its own kind of personality. And when you sync up your life with those weeks, it just makes it so much easier. I think that's what I'm, this is going to be the most exciting show because we will dive into each, each week because I think that's really cool. And there's weeks that I always, I would love to, if, I, here, I'm going to, I, I want to ask you to help me with a little project by, by the end of the show. I would love to be able to ask you and learn from you that how I can start to actually love week three because I actually really hate week three, but I don't want to hate it. I want to embrace it and love it. So that, I, I, mean, I will teach you. Yay. <laughs> I will say, there's something to love about every week. That's how I feel. I try not to play favorites with the weeks um, because I know that every week has its own gift, its own benefits. Now, every week has its own challenges, but they can be overcome when you know they're coming. That's, that's a great thing is yeah. when you know, okay, I'm going to have this challenge in my week one or week two, you know it's coming up. You can, you can make plans to overcome it, and then it's an easier week. How, how great is that? I know that's what that whole crystal ball. And I want to share with everybody listening too. I know a lot of the times I might have shied away from even learning about the cycle or the hormones because I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not planning to get pregnant. And usually, you know, if you, if, if I go to Google right. and I'm going to look up cycles, it's because it's finding out my fertility cycle. When am I fertile? When am I going to get pregnant? And I thought, I don't, that's not what I'm doing. I just want to know. <laughs> and 
Right. So that was when I, yes, and that's where you have actually created um, hormone, hor- the hor- the, yeah, sorry, hormone horoscope, and that's what I signed up for. That's what she forwarded me, and that's where I started that, and it was so tailored, so specific, I thought, and the way you write it's so beautiful. Oh, I know we are, we are, we will hit a commercial in, in about a minute. I'm going to start the story. Gabrielle, this is, this is where, this is why I reached out to, it, you always write about something that's so perfect going on. The, one of your latest articles or, or sharing of information was how our voice, like our actual speaking voice, singing voice, voice, right. it changes in tone and pitch throughout the cycle. And so if anybody is a singer out there or if they're doing, like I'm talking on the radio, because I used to wonder why sometimes my voice would be so terrific and clear, and then other times I thought, gosh, I actually sound tired, but I'm not. So it, I, uh, that was a neat one. Where did you even come up with talking about that? That's so cool. It just comes from the research. I research um, hormone studies every single day. It was new research, and it was very interesting. It showed how your voice changes across your cycle. If, um, have you noticed that before about your voice? Was that something that you actually were, oh, I, I get that. That's familiar to me. Yes, I recently... Uh, Okay, we'll be back in the See, we're going to head off with a voice question. Right. <laughs> The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Welcome back to the Cat Show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right. A group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, and of course, companionship. Just look how she struts. It's like she owns the place. And see how she curls up and cuddles her person. The pitch on her purring is simply perfect. Nice one. Fantastic cat. But really the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Nico is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Art Council. We're back here with Gabrielle Wickerman, creator of Hormonology. Love, love, love it. And just before we, we scooted off to commercial, we're talking about how the voice, even your voice, is affected by your hormones. It's just a result. And so, um, yes, Gabrielle, I was wondering, if, when you were researching that, did it, like, when I read your things, I go, oh, that's me. Like, I'm, I still resonate with everything. And I just wondered about you personally. Like, do you often, when you're reading research, especially about even the voice, like, do you thought, yeah, that's, that's for real. I already know that. I could feel it. Well, absolutely. I, I also have those aha moments because when, when new research comes out, you're like, oh, right, of course. You know, so even I, who's been doing this for many, many years, when new studies come out, can be really surprised. And this particular study um, showed that um, during certain parts of your cycle, during um, the latter part of your cycle, your week three and week four, which is the second half of your cycle, your voice can sound uh, grittier, rougher, um, it's a little bit lower. And there's been other research that's, that's talked about voice too, and, that's, and the, that research shows that your voice gets higher, clearer, uh, liltier, you use uh, more higher and lower notes um, in your week two, and that's the week leading up to and including ovulation. And that's a, that's a result of high estrogen. By the way, that's be- researchers believe it's because high estrogen wants to get you to flirt, and that's a more flirtatious yeah. way to talk. Yeah. But in any case, so um, 
when I read this new study about, okay, your voice is grittier, lower, yeah, grittier and lower and uh, rougher during your, you know, premenstrual week, I thought, okay, that makes so much sense because I had just filmed three videos um, talking a little bit about me and my, my path of hormonology and how I got to develop hormonology. And I did during my premenstrual week. And I noticed I sounded like my grandmother who had been smoking <laughs> for like 60 plus years. I said, wow, my voice is so rough. What in the world? I wasn't sick. And it just so happened that this study came out at the same time. Like, oh, of course, light bulb moment. It's because progesterone is causing a little bit of congestion. And as the, as the study explained, a little bit oh. of congestion in my voice box and the surrounding tissue. And it causes that, that, that roughness. So it was interesting. Oh. See, and that, you actually just got even deeper on that response. You know, that's that's so helpful because I know for, for me, and I, because I do videos or, you know, we're on the start here right now doing shows, I actually take it personally at first. I think, why? Why is it that I, you know, am I not drinking enough water? And I, I kind of hard on myself for things. And same with, I, I think even, well, Shelly, Shelly is, her hormones really affect her sleep. And I think you probably do that beyond any, more than anything. So often she was like, well, what's wrong with me? Like we always ask that. What's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Why am I different? And then people will pick up on, well, why are you acting so different today or this or that? But I love this understanding. I was going to ask you, do you relate – how – how with research, with research proving this, the moon, I know this one is surprising you with the moon one, but we always talk about the moon cycles. How in correlation are they to, to our real hormones? Okay, so there is a lot of, oh, history, you know, you know storytelling um, over, yeah. over the many, many generations that the moon is tied to the menstrual cycle. Um, this is, I, I talked about it on my blog at myhormonology.com, and it still is, was when I posted, it still is the most popular blog post I've ever oh. had, with so many comments. Oh Women goodness. are just really, like, tied into this. That's because we've really been told a lot about how the moon and our cycle are related, and it makes us feel closer to nature and to Mother Earth. And, you know, um, it just makes us feel tied in. However, and this is why it's kind of got a lot of a lot of response. The research right now is leading toward inconclusive to probably no relationship. And the reason for that is because they they feel that after trying to do many studies, like replicating, you know, uh, women's cycles and the moon phases, it was really came down to coincidence. Now. That doesn't mean future studies won't find something different. And other studies have actually found um, a link between menstrual cycle length and moon phases, which does mean that the moon and possibly the light emitted by the moon and how it impacts your sleep uh, does have an, have an effect on your cycle. So I think we're, this is an evolving, um, you know, research area. You know what? I love it. Okay, you just made me remember the the neatest thing I learned once I was interview I was doing a, an interview at a farm and it was just when we did the the time change. And I remember the farmer saying, Well, the hens aren't really happy right now because with the season changing and the time change, they're just not laying their eggs. Because a chicken or hen, well, they lay their eggs every 23 hours, give or take. And so with this, this sunlight, I love that you actually just brought up the moonlight, like the light does affect it. And it even affects the animals and the chickens. So <laughs> I remember that. But, so, yes, it really does affect that. The, um, going into, like, the week. So if, if you were to – if somebody – doesn't have a clue about anything. They just, you know what? I just, I get my period and then it's over right. and that's that. Um, what? Let's. Can you help tell us what does? Where does it start? Who? Which, where is one week? What does that even refer to? Okay. So let, just very quickly and succinctly, there's a lot going on in each week, but I'm going to keep this. Try to keep this very simple for people who are very new to this concept of hormonology and living in sync with your cycle and what goes on with your cycle. So week one. Week one starts with your period. It lasts seven days. And during this time, estrogen starts at rock bottom and rises slowly. Now, a lot of people think that their period week is one of the worst weeks of their cycle, but I personally believe that's a myth. I think that a lot of women have difficult week ones, but it's primarily due to menstrual cramp pain and fatigue as a result of losing iron from bleeding because your body sheds iron as you bleed. So, um, and the reason I say that is this. When estrogen rises during your week one, it does 
two things. One, it completely cures PMS. And the reason for that is premenstrual syndrome is caused in part, or in large part, by plunging estrogen. Therefore, when estrogen starts to rise, those symptoms ease up. Imagine that you're quitting caffeine. You get cranky, you get achy, you get moody, you get irritable. But once you start drinking caffeine again, all those symptoms disappear. It's the same way with estrogen. So that's one thing to look forward to in, in your period week is PMS disappears. And the other thing is, as estrogen rises, it um, triggers the production of brain chemicals that boost your mood, energy, motivation, optimism, all these good things. It uh, also helps lift your libido, so you're more interested in intimate pleasure. Um, you're, you, have, you just have more passion for life. You're more outgoing, um, mm -hmm. extroverted. And so my suggestion is if you're having a difficult week one, try to um, rein in those period cramps. I recommend natural treatments such as uh, heat compress, which is study proven to, to um, alleviate uh, mild to moderate cramps. And um, if you can, uh, if, you're, if you're healthy and able to take an iron supplement, you have to ask your doctor first, um, then that would also be beneficial because you'd be replenishing that lost iron. And when your iron goes low, as you, you know, as a nutritionist, you get foggy, you get cranky, you get irritable, you get depressed. And if you can replenish that iron, you can have a better week one. So week one is actually pretty good if you can get cramps and iron under control. Week two is a lot of women's favorite weeks. This is the week leading up to and including ovulation. During this week, estrogen is rising till it peaks, and testosterone rises at the end and it also peaks. And when these two at hormones the climb, yes, you know, we have testosterone, we, do, we produce testosterone all cycle long, but it peaks at ovulation. And when these yes, hormones... I, think I want to highlight are. that. Yeah, yeah, I really want Go to right highlight ahead. that with the women because, okay, because like a lot of people, for uh, women, we, we don't know or we don't realize or we don't think about that we have testosterone as well. And this, yes. that, uh, that we, but we want that. We do want that. We're, we're, it's necessary. It's needed. Um, and it does, it can do some things that we might not like. We, we, you and I were talking about <laughs> it might be a little bit of that. <laughs> of that a little extra hair growth here and there that we want to keep under control. Um, or actually, I was going to ask you this. I actually find that I don't get my worst skin at my period. I get my worst skin when I'm ovulating. And I'm like, hey, wait a second, universe. Aren't I supposed to be the most attractive right now? I'm supposed to be flirting. How can I find that again? Why? I was just about to say, yeah, I was just about to say, you know, you, you mentioned that testosterone can prompt hair growth where we don't want it. Unfortunately, it can also prompt more oil in our uh, in our mm -hmm. skin, mm -hmm. and um, at ovulation, what ha there's a few things that happen in ovulation. Mm -hmm. One thing is that progesterone does start to rise, right? Right, it just starts to rise. Um, it, it's just getting lift off, and when progesterone rises, it does um, it does cause some inflammation that can cause uh, oh. the, the pores yeah. in the skin to actually kind of swell and trap dirt. So now you've got this extra oil. And now you've got um, <laughs> you've got the swollen pores, you know, sucking it in. So this is a time to, around ovulation when you want to cleanse more, you want to exfoliate oh, more, get that dirt out, get that oil, get on top of that. But so is ovulation more of a spa day? Is that, is that our spa week where we should be going and doing our little beauty stuff? <laughs> Well, that's, you know, it really depends. Um, you know, week two is a time when high estrogen and high testosterone are boosting your mood, energy, extroversion. It's making you outgoing. It's making you motivated. Um, you know, it's, it's revving your libido to cycle long highs. If you're not uh, taking advantage of your libido um, during this time, then I'm really not doing my job here because these home hormones are also oh. making your climax is more intense and easier to achieve. Um, so, uh, if you if you go for a rigorous spa treatment, you know something. You know, I once went to Istanbul and I had two <laughs> two half naked women beating me with bushes. I did not anticipate that, <laughs> but that's how they did it at this spa, and it was very vigorous. So I, you know, I'm glad I was in my week two then because I was, you know, I was open to it. But if you want something mellow, if you want a relaxing, rejuvenating, calming experience, then I would wait for, you know, the second half of your um, cycle to do that. Oh, so, so I'm just 
see, this is what we talked about um, planning and predicting, predicting and planning. See that we're, we're going to know what we're more. Um, and, oh, I'm going to throw this one at you. Um, is there a week when we're more susceptible to catching a cold or um, like our immune system? Do we have a more um, susceptible week that our immune system just says, you know what, I'm not feeling the greatest right now and I could get sick to so keep me healthy? <laughs> Yeah, you know what? It comes at a weird time or an unexpected time. So um, during the first half of your cycle, rising estrogen is making you feel good. It's boosting your mood. It's making you extroverted. During the second half, two dips in estrogen and rising progesterone kind of make you feel more sedate, tired, um, achy, uh, and, uh, you know, a little emotionally sensitive. So you might mm. think that your most vulnerable time is during that kind of achy, tired, yeah. rundown time, and it is not. Research shows that your immune system actually dips at ovulation. You become more vulnerable to illnesses of all sorts. So when you, you know, touch a shopping cart handle or an ATM button, mm. you better use that, um, you know, that Purell during, right afterwards because if you're in your, around ovulation. And the reason is interesting. Researchers say it's because um, you're, it's, during ovulation, your body wants you to get pregnant, whether you want to or not. So it does all it can to help you, and it reduces Barriers your down. ability to fend off, you know, invading viruses because it doesn't want your body to fight off sperm. Why? Oh, that makes so, so much sense. Oh, and that's such a great place for commercial. Oh, this is good. Okay. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg roll showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Alrighty, so we left off just talking about the immune system and that our when we wouldn't think this, but our defenses are actually most down ovulation. And the aha moment just came on. I was like, of course, because we are trying to receive. So we're going to receive everything, germs included. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And so, um, so once our defenses are down, then I'm going to, I have to ask this now, they're down on ovulation. What would it be? Our healing system, would that kind of kick and then just following? Like, when do we repair the most or heal the most? Well, that's an interesting question. It, it, you are generally healthier. You, if you have chronic conditions like eczema or asthma, um, you generally feel better in the first half of your cycle 
after the first few days of your period. Around right. menstruation, right before menstruation and during the first few days of menstruation, you do kind of get a health hit. It does, uh, many chronic Ooh. conditions do worsen. However, as estrogen rises throughout the first half of your cycle, many conditions do improve. But it's just funny that when your estrogen peaks, that's when your immune system suddenly drops and you become more uh, you become more vulnerable. And it's interesting because you don't realize you get sick until, you know, there's usually an incubation period about 7 to 14 days yes. so or 7 to 10 days. So you're sick during your premenstrual week and you're thinking, oh, it's because, you know, I'm, my hormones are low. And it's not. It's, it's, a, you know, it's a high hormone better to blame. Right, we have that. Yeah, we have to remember that too. There is a, that incubation that we don't even know what's going on yet. It's there, it's doing its thing. Um, uh, just, we're, because we're talking about the rising and the falling of, of estrogen, and I'm, I'm starting to fall in love even more with estrogen. However, now it's also, and I don't want to live in fear here, but I also know that as I as I get older, I'm all everything's going to start dropping a lot. Do I? I don't actually know. Do you do the hormone horoscope for women who are in menopause or premenopausal? Not yet, because um, there's still a lot of work still to be done um, for women who are cycling. And I have to get my book out and, you know, my second book, that is. And um, I have a lot of stuff, that, tools that I want to deliver. But I do get so many emails from women who are perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal, and who are pregnant and breastfeeding who want to know what's up with my hormones. So those are definitely coming down the pike. Right. And speaking of tools, you actually have released an app. It's fabulous. It's amazing. And can you tell us about that app? And because it's, it's an amazing tool. It's that crystal ball. This app is the crystal ball, right? <laughs> That's right. I, I believe it is. It's a very popular app, too. Um, it's the Hormone Horoscope app. And it's on the, it's at the App Store and Google Play. I have a free version, you know, if you like it. Um, there's a pro version that has more bells and whistles, but there will always be a free version. And in that free version, it's a menstrual cycle tracker. And every day of your cycle, you get a hormone horoscope, which is basically a summary of how your hormones are going to be impacting your mood, health, energy, behavior, everything. Um, it's really helpful because this helps you plan today, tomorrow, next week, next month. Um, makes everything so much easier. And you know what? And then you can upgrade. And what what would the difference be um, by doing the free one and then and then boosting up to the? I think it's, you said a dollar ninety nine. So it's, it's very affordable for anybody here. But what is it? What would you be getting in the that one? Well, I love the pro version. I personally use the pro version because. In the free version, it, it focuses solely on your, your current cycle. But the pro version um, tracks past cycles and all future cycles. So when I'm making an appointment, say, for a doctor, you know, my orthodontist, because I have braces, um, I don't want to get, I don't, I don't want to get um, my braces tightened, you know, during my premenstrual week because plunging estrogen um, can make pain more intense. I want to do it during my week two because high estrogen helps tamp down pain. So I can look two months, three months, six months, a year in advance and see where my cycle is, where I'm going to be in my cycle and say, okay, that's my week two. And that's, the, that's one of the benefits of the Hormone Horoscope Pro. The other benefit is um, the Hormone Horoscopes and the Hormone Horoscope Pro are much more detailed. There's a lot of work. It's actually um, based on my forthcoming book. So it's, it's, like a, it's like a concise version of my book. And you can search categories, mood, health, energy. You can go straight to the category that you want for the day, money. Um, you don't have to, like, uh, you don't have to scroll through. It's just boom, boom, boom. So it's, it's easy, it's detailed, and it's, and it's useful. All right. Well, I can't. I'm already excited now because I'm getting that. However, you've also not <laughs> left anybody out. You have also want to support all these wonderful women who are wanting to plan and predict and, and learn, but you've also helped their mates because you have something called um, the Female Forecaster. Yes, that's my latest app. And believe it or not, I was inspired to make the Female Forecaster, which is for boyfriends and husbands of cycling women, because users of the Hormone Horoscope were writing to me and saying, look, I'm forwarding my daily Hormone Horoscope to my, my male partner. But she's not reading it because it's too long. Like women, you know, like the details, but men want to get straight to the point. And so they asked me to make something that was like the hormone horoscope, 
but more concise and, and just basically uh, geared toward what guys want to know about. So I did make the female forecaster and um, it recently launched. I well, congratulations for that. That is very. I love when I first met you and we were talking about this. The, the most important thing you said, you know what? You just want to spread this, get this out to everybody, men and women, because it's. I love what you said practical, easy to implement, and immediate results. And I know that that's, that's why right. I, and I, I was. Do, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and I try to get out as much of this stuff at no cost, as much as possible. Like for the female forecaster, I do have the female forecaster app in the App Store and Google Play, but I also have a free ebook, which is a short guide introduction for men. It's perfect, it's completely free and you can get it at femaleforecaster.com. Um, so it's, I, I don't wanna, I wanna spread this knowledge and I wanna make it easy for people to access it. Right, and uh, you actually were you saying earlier when I asked you about the moon, you know, it, they had research at one point and they will have new research, you know, tomorrow or in a month from now. Right. And so you are, you're watching like the trends, like the, you're doing daily research. And I thought that was really, really cool because I used to think, this is, I used to think I got my period every full moon. Oh, that was me. And then they said, if women get their period on full moon, they're more powerful. And I was like, yeah. And then, and then suddenly, you know, 10 years later, I'm not getting my period full moon. And I'm like, oh, wait, does that mean I'm not powerful? <laughs> <laughs> so personal. Like our hormones are so. It's us. It's really about us. And and I love that you've created these things to put it. What? How are you going to feel? What's going to be the best way for you in doing this? So as we as we scoot through the the weeks and everything. Um, so we've we've kind of gone through the one. You said one is day one is the first day of the cycle. That is that's where we start. That's where we go. And then moving forward, um, yeah, can we talk about week three? Because I do want to definitely, like, love week three. Yes, what's that personality of week three? Okay, so week three begins uh, after ovulation. It's the week after ovulation, and, and it lasts eight days. And some women actually really love week three because they may have more anxiety in week two due to such high estrogen. High estrogen can make you very revved and antsy and up. Um, so when we move to week three, lower estrogen and rising progesterone make you more sedate, mellow, introspective, uh, makes you cautious, it makes you quieter. Uh, it's, it, but for people who love, for women who love that week two, high energy, rev, wow, go, 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 this week Yay. three shift can be a real bummer, it can be a real, like, shock. And um, are you like that? Is that what, why you don't like your week three? Yes. See? I'm having my mom because <laughs> I keep thinking, why am I, why, where's my energy? Why don't I want to do this? Why am I feel introvert suddenly? And I, and it, it, it there's me again, kind of judging myself going, something's wrong. Why are you like this? And I, I'm so badly like, trying to do the opposite. Like, no, 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 you're, you're excited. You're happy. Let's go. And I'm like, nope, just don't want to. <laughs> yes, that's where my confusion comes from. But okay. So you said there was progesterone. So that's, that's, I got to love progesterone. That's what I need to do. <laughs> well, here's the great thing about, you know, week three. It is a time that you can take to um, get your energy back. I mean, because during the first half of your cycle, as estrogen mm. is climbing, climbing, you're extroverted, you're out there in the world, you're doing more. And if you can anticipate, okay, week three is going to come, let's do things that rejuvenate that feed me and nourish me in a different way, in a mellower way. I, you know, I recommend that women um, plan to read a self-help book or listen to a radio show like this that, that helps them transform their lives or um, take a walk in, in the park. Do things that are mellower, plan to do them um, so that you can look forward to them. Week three is also a time when you prefer comforting things, comforting food, comforting activities, comforting oh, people. Mm -hmm. So also plan to, you know, hang out with your best buds, um, you know, sit in front of a fire, make your, your most, you know, your, your favorite banana bread, these things. If you can look forward to, if you have mellowing things that match that, that, that lower energy and that mellower mood, you'll enjoy it because it's kind of like surfing. 
You know, if you go against the wave, you're going to fall. But if you go with it, right. and you just, you know, if you're, you're high, you, you know, you, you stay up and, you, you know, you surf the high points. When you go low and, you know, you, you just change your, your body and you, you move with that when it goes into a, a low. And that's what week three, that's the key. You have to plan to enjoy mellower activities or else that screeching halt that you come to with your energy motivation can be jarring. You know what, I think that's where I was, I remember reading, that's where my, in week three, maybe I can love it more by saying, this is where I'll do more of the meditation yoga. This is where I'll do a little bit more of those. Is, is, is week three and four, the, that's the cardio one, right? Because you're, it's slower, yes. but longer. Aha! See? That's cool. Making sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so maybe that's, I guess, I think that's exactly. So with, if women are out there and they're wondering, you know, which you, you know, you, if you have to say they're a member of a gym and they're looking at it and they're thinking, oh, these, this class is here, this class is there, if they have the app, actually, does the app let people, women see which might be, like, every day it will say, oh, you know what, maybe today is a yoga class for you, or oh, today maybe it's heavy-duty weight training and, and Powerball here. Yes, especially the pro app, because it does go into more detail in every category, whereas the, the light app, um, the free app is more of a summary. It's a quick snapshot, and the pro app goes into a lot of detail. But, you know, for women who are, you know, who like to exercise during the first half of their cycle, rising estrogen helps build muscle faster, and um, during the second half of their cycle, um, you burn 30% more fat when you do cardio. Oh, say it again. Say that again. <laughs> uh, during the first half of your cycle, rising estrogen helps you build more muscle when you do weightlifting, and you burn more cardio during the second half. Burn more fat during the second Aha. half. Aha. Burn more second half cardio. Okay, when we come back, more goodies. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. And back for more from Gabrielle Lichterman, and she is creator of MyHormonology.com. I think I was going to say, do we call, is it always My Hormonology, or is that just a website? That's just a website. It's Hormonology, and the Hormone Horoscope is one of the major tools of Hormonology. Okay, that's my right. My is to the website. The website. Perks. Everybody really, they just go there, check it out, learn these cycles. And we still get to talk about week four. Um, yeah, because four, right now it seems so uneventful because we have so much going on for the other week. But what is week four about? <laughs> okay, so week four is the final six days of your cycle. And a lot of women are already very familiar with their premenstrual week and may, and may have a lot of assumptions about their premenstrual week. Um, yes, it's true. As estrogen goes down, it can, in some women, 
produce moodiness, irritability, aches, pains, et cetera. Not every woman gets premenstrual symptoms, um, but some women, you know, many women do. And uh, the, generally, the healthier your lifestyle, the fewer your premenstrual symptoms, generally. Some women are more sensitive to plunging estrogen. Okay, so we all know this part. But let me introduce you to the other part of your premenstrual week, because I think there's Ooh. benefits to your premenstrual week that women just aren't familiar with. For one, awesome! Oh my this, goodness! <laughs> actually, there's quite a few. Um, there's quite a few interesting things about your premenstrual week. So as your estrogen goes down, you know it, it changes the levels of your mood moderating um, brain chemicals. And one thing that happens is you become more emotionally sensitive. And one great thing about that is that you can channel your deeper emotions into art, into some creative project, into painting or poetry, um, you know, music, uh, which I think is, is just wonderful. Because during the other weeks of your cycle, you're more, you know, happy-go-lucky in a pie in the sky. But when you're more in touch with your emotions, these are times you can channel, you know, your real self. Another thing that happens is as estrogen drops, you become more wary and more alert. As a result, you spot dangers faster than women in other weeks of their cycle. For instance, you would be better at spotting a car veering into your lane suddenly because you have this, you know, brain mindset that's already, I'm on alert, I'm on alert because of the shift in brain chemicals due to plunging estrogen. Um, another thing, you know, I, I, I love, um, you know, pointing out the benefits of each cycle week because you can you can yeah. appreciate every cycle week. You know, another thing, another benefit is that when you're shopping, you're less likely to be taken in by a fast-talking salesperson. And that's because, again, plunging estrogen, changing brain chemicals makes you more wary of what people are saying to you. You're more uh, doubtful of, you know, big claims. Whereas if you go shopping in week two of your cycle, the week leading up to and including ovulation, high estrogen is making you very optimistic. It's making you, yeah. you, you, you know, it's boosting your mood. And you are actually more likely to fall for a line because you're hoping it's actually true. Not so in week four. In week four, shop for that car, get the appliance, you know, do your haggling because this is a time when you're going to be uh, much more successful. I love that. Do your haggling in week four, everybody. That's what we want to do. Negotiations are in week four. And I, and that is so true because, you know, when you kind of are happy and just out there and ever, you love the world and the world loves you and your your defenses are down and we're susceptible in that week two, you're right. I, I don't, now I want to go back to my credit card statements and see if maybe I've been making major purchases <laughs> that week. <laughs> Yeah, it's generally true. <laughs> I think you'll find that you have. You know, that week two, we research shows is when you buy the designer, you know, items, the high ticket items, you're way more likely to splurge in your week two. Okay, actually, you know what? I have a confession. I'm doing this right on air. You know what? I can literally remember. I there was a, a switch that flipped for me. Literally, I could. I was out every day going, "Oh, why am I doing this? I'm out having lunch here, and I'm buying over there. We can splurge there." And then suddenly, it was like, oh, "I haven't bought anything in four days. I'm so proud of myself because I don't even feel like I want to." And I thought it was me, like just me and my brain. Probably, yeah. you know what? It's probably my hormones kicking in. All that is so probably. Funny. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, and your I'm wallet tends to get a breather in week three. Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that part with us. The uh, you mentioned about the the healthier lifestyle that you have generally, and and I do find this that symptoms, let's say like the painful ones, the uncomfortable ones, the draw, anything just you know rocks your world. Um, I know that when I take fish oil, uh, it completely changes my entire cycle. It's it's very. If I don't take them, then I get that migraine. Like that. Oh, can we talk about that migraine actually? That because a lot of them do. Um, yeah, I, but you know, when I do the fish oil, I I, I rarely get it. So I, that is because it's. Re can you help us explain that why why the headache maybe, and then why healthy lifestyle will actually help prevent that or you know just cure it? Well, I actually have menstrual migraines too. So I've done a lot of research on it, and I take a lot of different supplements for it. Generally, when it comes to migraine treatments, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, a woman has yeah. to um, really go out and try different remedies and different, um, you know, constellations of re remedies. Like one might not work, but two together might or three together might. 
And so she should really talk with her doctor, her nutritionist, um, and, and, and try to find the right supplements because there are different supplements. I take magnesium and CoQ10, for instance. Fish yeah. oil doesn't work for me, um, but it does work for you, uh -huh. probably due to the anti-inflammatory <laughs> effects of fish oil. Yes. Um, but if you have menstrual migraines, you should know that research proves menstrual migraines are the most intense and long-lasting form of migraine. So you're, it's, it's not all in your head. You really are suffering, it's, and you should – but mm -hmm. there's natural remedies. I've written about many, many natural remedies on my website, myhormonology.com, in my blog, because I am a menstrual migraine sufferer, too. You know what? I'm going to have to thank you yet again, because you specifically said around ovulate, just after ovulation, progesterone, because we're talking about skin, which is inflammation. Do you know what? If That's actually my, my point. If I, if I don't take fish oil all month, as long as I take it after I ovulate, which is progesterone, which you're right, it is inflammation, and, and fish oil is an anti-inflammatory supplement. And now I get it. It's, there you go. And that's, <laughs> that's beautiful. See? All these, all the, now I can start predicting and knowing this. And whereas the magnesium, I know that it is, I call it the muscle relaxer. And um, for you, maybe to site, it's more you're feeling the intense thing. Or any woman suffering from these things and having these, these feelings. So, I go, oh. So, yeah, so that one, so that's week four, and we're loving week four. Um, now I do love, I love week four, and you said it was about six days? Yes. Okay. It's so the final then, six days of your cycle. Also, the final six days. And, and it changes, the day cycles always change. So sometimes we can have, tw what if somebody's saying out there, I do have 28 days. Oh, but I have 31, but I only have 25. And if, what if it's not... Um, like say one month, one somebody has twenty five days, but then the next one, the next one right. is thirty one days. What do we, what do we do with those extra days? Like where do they go to? Do they have an extra week? Well, the great thing about hormonology is you don't have to have a twenty eight day cycle at all, and you don't have to have a steady cycle. I don't. My the length of my cycle changes from month to month as well. Um, the way it works is uh, the first half of your cycle is from your period, the first half of your period through ovulation, and then the second half is from the day after ovulation to um, the pre next period. And that second half is generally a stable 14 days. And that's because uh, by then your body thinks, okay, I might be pregnant. So it kicks in this kind of inner clock. And it, the clock is very specific. So um, the week three is eight days and week four is six, day, six days, even though sometimes it can feel like 40 or 50 days. <laughs> but um, right, the right. week three is only... <laughs> Just because it goes on and on. But week three is eight days, and then week four is six days. So when you um, determine ovulation, which you can do very easily, there's many tools out there, um, ovulation detectors that are super um, easy to use and inexpensive. Those two you can also find on my website at myhormonology.com um, under my recommendations. But uh, you use these tools to find, ovulate, find out when you ovulate. As soon as you ovulate, boom. 14 days later, you're going to get your period. And that's really great to know because a lot of women who aren't trying to get pregnant don't realize that there is this inner clock in your cycle that helps you keep track. So that if you do have a 31-day cycle or a 22-day cycle, or it changes, you know anyway when your, your next period is going to come. And, and what you had mentioned in the, the pro version, um, and I do really want let the uh, – the, uh, the app, the name of the app to go to that one. Can you just remind us all what app that is? It's Sure. It's the Hormone Horoscope app available at the App Store and Google Play. Okay. I the, This is going to be phenomenal. I was going to say, like, your, the prediction of, you know, if you're supposed, somebody's going to get married or they want to go on vacation or they want to do all these things, they can really oh, yeah. um, forecast that and plan that. And, and the male partner can say, okay, yes, I need to check this too. Who am I going to be dealing with when I go? <laughs> you know Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and the free, I love the free ebook. Actually, you have so many books that are available, um, free ones and just things. I truly, like, it has changed my life. It just helped me to, like I said, the crystal, the crystal ball, knowing these things. And even now, just having this conversation with you has enlightened me on two two major things. And before we go, because this is a hot question, I every woman wanted me to ask you this: wine and our cycles. The glass of wine, okay. you know, is that. Is there a better time that, talk, you know, just it's going to help us to relax because we have one minute, and I know everybody's asking about the wine question. When can we have Okay, that? very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Very quickly, one study shows that women do drink more um, alcohol uh, during their premenstrual week. 
That's not probably a big surprise. It's because, you know, we want to lessen the pain and moodiness from plunging estrogen. But here's a kind of interesting study. It shows that your decision-making skills get more impaired by alcohol during the first half of your cycle. So if you're drinking, try to maybe rein it in a little or be aware that, okay, you're going to need a friend to, like, to like uh, tell you what not to do. Uh, <laughs> right. You need a buddy who's not on the same cycle as you, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Gabrielle, this has been an absolute pleasure. I, I want to run to the site right now to read more and more and more, and I hope that every woman and male gets to go and learn and, and read about this and find out. But but right now, let's direct it to you, which is www.myhormonology.com, and literally from that site, you guys will be able to find everything that you need from Gabrielle, and, just, and you can also reach out, just like I reached out to her. So again, Gabrielle, thank yeah. you so much so much for being here and um, I have a feeling that you're going to get a lot more questions coming to you soon and thank you for changing the world for us oh, thank you Lisa I appreciate everything okay we'll talk to you soon okay okay bye bye bye